Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at the graphs of rational functions. Um, I'm going to do an example for you and then I have one provided that you can practice on your own uh, and of course practice problems in my lab. So we're going to graph the function 3x squared minus 3 over x squared minus 4. Remember this is a rational function because you have a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. Um, and that gives us rational functions. So I have these steps that you can follow when graphing these. So the first thing is you want to find the x and y intercepts. So if you'll remember, to find an x intercept, you're going to let the y equal 0. So I'm going to do that here. So I'm just going to take y, which is f of x, and make it equal 0. Now, since you have a fraction and it equals zero, when does a fraction equal zero? It's when the numerator equals zero, right? Like if I had zero over three, that just reduces to zero. So all I really care about here is the numerator. I don't care about the denominator. Um, I'm just going to take the numerator and find out where it equals zero. So to solve this for x, I'm going to add three to both sides. And then I would divide by 3, so you get 1 equals x squared. And then I'm going to undo the square, so I'm going to take the square root. And when I do that, I get plus or minus 1. So I have two x-intercepts. One of them is at negative 1, 0. And the other is at positive 1, 0. And then remember to find the y-intercept, you're going to let x equal 0. So you're simply going to replace all of your x's with 0. So I'm going to take my function and just find f of 0. So I'm going to have 3 times 0 squared minus 3 over 0 squared minus 4. And 0 times anything is just 0, so the first terms just go away. And I'm left with negative 3 over negative 4, which reduces to 3 fourths. So my y-intercept would be 0 comma 3 fourths. Okay, so the points negative 1, 0, and 1, 0, and 0, 3 fourths are three very important points that I need. The next thing you want to do is find the vertical asymptotes. So we talked about that in class today. Um, to do that, you're going to set the denominator equal to zero. Um, before we do that, though, um, we also want to try simplifying, okay? So um, my function is f of x equals 3x squared minus 3 over x squared minus 4. I can factor the denominator. We talked about it today. It's called a difference of squares. So it factors into x minus 2, x plus 2. And then in the numerator, I can factor a 3 out since both terms have a 3. 3x squared divided by 3 is just x squared. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. So you have 3 times x squared minus 1. Okay, x squared minus 1 also factors into x plus 1 times x minus 1. It's also a difference of squares. But um, I'll write it here, but it's not going to help with the problem at all. Because as you can see, the numerator and the denominator, nothing cancels out there. Okay, so since nothing cancels for me, I have two vertical asymptotes, and those would occur where the denominator equals zero. So I'm going to take my denominator, set it equal to zero, and there are your two vertical asymptotes. You'll have one at x equals two and one at x equals negative two. So also remember that vertical asymptotes are, remade, are uh, related to the domain. So my domain will be x such that x can't equal negative 2 and x can't equal 2. 
And if you were writing that in interval notation, it would go negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to 2, union 2 to infinity. Now I need to look for horizontal or oblique asymptotes. And remember, there's three cases there. So if I take my um, function, which is f of x equals 3x squared minus 3 over x squared minus 4, I'm going to compare the uh, degree in the numerator, which is n, so that's 2, and the degree in the denominator, which is m, and that's 2. And you'll recall that when n equals m, the horizontal asymptote is y equals the coefficient on top, so 3, divided by the coefficient on the bottom, which we don't see there. It's actually just 1. So 3 divided by 1 is 3. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be um, y equals 3. There is no slant asymptote or oblique asymptote because for that to happen, the power in the numerator would have to be greater than the power in the denominator by 1. Okay, next we're going to look at symmetry. So remember, in order to tell if something is symmetric with the y-axis, you just need to replace all your x's with negative x's. And if it returns the same exact function you started with, it's even. And any function that's even is also symmetric to the y-axis. If you replace all the x's with negative x's and you get the opposite of the function you started with, the function's odd. So remember, O for odd, O for opposite. And also, O for origin. It's symmetric with the origin. So let's take our function. And everywhere there's an x, I'm going to replace it with negative x. If I simplify the top, anytime you square a negative x, you get a positive x. So that just gives me 3x squared minus 3 in the numerator. And in the denominator, if I square negative x, I get x squared minus 4. So I have the same function that I started with. That means then that this is even and it's symmetric to the y-axis. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to find additional points that I could use um, to create this graph. Okay, so if I was to um, plug this into Desmos, so you could see this. You can also see where our asymptotes are. So there's your two vertical asymptotes. Here is your horizontal asymptote. Okay, and I'm going to make them dashed so they're easier to see. Okay, I want to choose some values to the left and to the right um, so I can kind of see what's going on. So, um, my, uh, if I go to the left of the black line, I could choose some values over there like negative 5, negative 10, whatever values you want. Um, I would also want to choose some values in between the black and red dashed lines. So right there, that's negative 1, and I know that that is negative 2. So I would want to choose some values in between negative 1 and negative 2, like negative 1.5. And then I want to choose like values between 1 and positive 2, so 1.5.
and then choose some other numbers to the right of the red dashed line. Okay, and I'm gonna show you a trick for getting the um, answers relatively, really quickly in your um, answer. So let's choose uh, 1.5 and negative 1.5. And then let's do like three, five, and eight, and negative three, negative five, and negative eight. Okay, so let me plug this into the calculator. Okay, I'm gonna put the function in here. So let me switch on. See, same graph as what I just showed you in Desmos. Um, but now I want to get a table of values, right? So I want to go to second table. Okay, and if you notice, there's already values in there, and I don't necessarily want those. So what I need to go to is table set right here, second window. And just make sure that you type in, make sure you have ask, because then it's going to allow you to plug numbers in that you want. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the table again, okay, and I'm just gonna plug in some numbers here. If you don't click ask, if you do auto, it'll just give you the values, um, and they may not be the ones that you want. It's usually just whole numbers. So I'm gonna type in negative 1.5, and it'll tell me what the Y value is. Okay, so it's negative 2.1. If you type in positive 1.5, you're actually gonna get the same thing. It's two point, negative 2.1. Okay, and then you would type in the rest, like three was another number I used, five was another number I used, and negative five, and they're, all, they're already in the table. Okay, and then you would want eight and negative eight. Okay, so it only allows me to type in certain values, which is fine. You could get rid of the negative two and the two up top if you wanted. Um, but I'm going to plug these values in. So let me switch back to here. Now I'm gonna give you those values. So you would get negative 2.1 for both of those, 4.8, 3.4, 3.1, 4 4.8, 3.4 and 3.1. Okay, and I already graphed it on Desmos, but I'm gonna graph it here again so you can see it. So I wanna plot my x-intercepts, um, and if you'll remember, my x-intercepts were, um, I don't remember what they were, uh, plus one and minus one. So here's my x-intercepts. I had a y-intercept at zero comma three-fourths, so three-quarters is like right about there. I also had my um, asymptotes. I had one at x equals negative two, so that would be right there, and x equals positive two. And then don't forget, you also have one at y equals three. Now to finish this graph, I'm going to put some of the values in that I had found earlier. So like 1.5 and negative 2.1. And negative 1.5 and negative 2.1. So that portion of the graph is gonna look like this. And then I had some other values like 
3 and 4.8. So I'm going to go over 3 and then up 4.8. And then don't forget negative 3 and negative 4.8. Um, 5 and 3.4, and negative 5 and negative 3.4, your graph is going to kind of look like this. And you can check it on Desmos. Um, we had said earlier that the domain would be x such that x doesn't equal negative 2 or 2. But now what about the range? So the range here, and I'll write it in set notation, is if you notice, um, there's nothing in between right there. So that goes from negative or positive three-fourths, the y-intercept, up to that number there, which would be three, right? There's nothing there. So in other words, y has to be less than or equal to three-fourths so that means the y-intercept down, because the parabola is pointing down, or y has to be greater than that horizontal asymptote at 3 for the range, because there's nothing in between 3 fourths and 3. Either the y values are going to be 3 fourths or less, or they're going to be greater than 3. Remember, it can't be greater than or equal to because there's an asymptote there, so you don't want the y values to ever equal 3. They can't ever equal 3. Okay, so that's the video for 5.4. Um, again, these take practice. There's plenty of problems to practice with in your homework. And then there's one more here you can try. If you have any questions, please reach out to me, but please don't wait long to start the homework. You want to start it right away. This way, if you have questions, you can always ask in class, um, or you can... Um, you know, email me. All right. Hope you all have a great rest of your day.